Yes, I'm back, family. And right now I'm talking about what I a little bit what I mentioned in my last video. Y'all know I like to correct myself when I speak out of order. But um I said the girl who planned that uh her white supremacist attack I said it was in Pittsburgh correction, it was actually in Maryland. And CNN, they little puss asses finally put out a quiet news article with a short video on their website. But you know, this was ISIS, uh, Israel, anybody of Melon who did this. It would have been known as a terrorist attack. It would have been plastered on every white supremacist major news outlet on television. But when it's one of masses children, well, we're just going to keep it quiet. Let's go ahead and roll the clip. Police say Nicole Severio was on a mission to massacre fellow students at her high school in the shadow of Camp David, and that she was prepared to die as part of her attack. Police say she'll face multiple charges, accused of amassing an arsenal, including a Remington 870 pump shotgun, fireworks, and nails, which police believe would be used to make pipe bombs. Certainly she had the intent, the material, the means, and we believe it was going to happen. In a twist that has left this small, tightly knit community reeling, police say the 18-year-old's plans were thwarted by her own father, who discovered her plot and turned her in to police before she could carry it out next week. The father saw some behavioral changes over a period of time. For whatever reason, he looked into her journal or her diary. He reported that to the school authorities and my deputies basically at the same time. Police discovered the weapons in the family's home. The sheriff here says the plans seemed advanced. He says Severio mentioned the Columbine and Sandy Hook school massacres in her diary and that she had recorded details of the school's emergency procedures. Investigators believe Severio had been also studying the movements of a female sheriff's deputy assigned to the school. We believe that she was probably watching her pattern of coming and going, probably watching or looking at the type of weapon she was carrying what on her person. Officials say Severio was also enrolled in a criminal justice program at the school district's career center nearby. Back at her high school, just 90 minutes north of Washington, there's a sense of disbelief. She was always a really funny, sweet person. You would never think that it, you would never think that it would be her to do something like this. Like I knew something was up with her, but I would have never imagined that it was this bad. County school spokesman Michael Dorer says there was nothing unusual in Severio's disciplinary record. Were there any signs of bullying, emotional issues, relationship issues with the student? We had no indication whatsoever that there were any issues with this student. But the sheriff says her diary tells a different story. You could read the frustration, the emotional issues, the, the emotional problems she was having, talking about uh, how she could she could conduct this uh, uh, shooting, the fact that she may, may have been the first female active school shooter in the country. Tonight, there is sincere gratitude toward a father who had to make an excruciating decision to turn in his own daughter in order to save other people's children. It had to be a very uh, agonizing decision. It's a decision I'm sure no parent would ever want to make. But ultimately, it was the right thing to do for his daughter. Um, you know, very difficult, but the right thing to do. Did you see how the mainstream white supremacist media are always coddling these savages? You know, we didn't know that she was like this. We didn't see anything in her pattern change. She was always smiling. She was so nice. Fuck out of here. This evil albinoid devil was about to be on some white supremacist. She was trying to be on, on the hall of, in the Hall of Fame of white supremacy. He said it in the journal. I'm going to be the first female white supremacist to do a mass attack on U.S. soil. I told y'all. Didn't I tell y'all? Next month, I told you. It's a game, man. We worried about who's winning the NCAA tournament. Who's chain got snatched? Who's sleeping with who? You got these crazy crackers running around ready to snap like that. You heard what the kids said. You was chilling. I'm saying we ain't, we ain't know. I mean, you had one chick say she was on some crazy shit, but other people was like, nah. Well, they were white, so they're probably just as crazy as cat shit as she is, but any moment, these crackers can snap. They're losing their minds. 
the numbers are declining. They're saying it's too many, it's too diverse. Talking about white genocide. You got Steve Bannon and them crackers talking about black genocide. Parading around Camp of the Saints. A new white supremacist encyclopedia these white supremacists are studying. It's just getting real, man. And they're going to talk. They also talking about we're going to, she needs psychological help. Bullshit. When it was the Somalian dude who stabbed those white kids at Ohio State, it was, that psychological shit wasn't even in the picture. He was just a terrorist. We got to ban Somalians. When it's white supremacy, uh, she she was a loner. He or she, they, they, they were neglected. They had psychological issues. Same shit, different characters. Like I told y'all, protect yourself by any means. I love y'all. Get in the comments, like, subscribe, get a video.